As climate change moves quickly forward, many Middle Eastern countries are trying to switch from carbon-based economies to ones that will attract people from all over the world, whether they want to visit, do business, work, or live there. One such project is called an EOM, and it will be built in Saudi Arabia, a city that is 170 kilometers long and 200 meters wide and is very modern. There are about 9 million people who live behind walls that are about 500 meters high. Saudi Arabia's plans are crazy. But how likely is this plan that the Crown Prince talked about? Who puts it together? The Line, a futuristic city that will cost $725 billion and house 9 million people, is a key part of the plan. It is a mirror structure that looks like a wall and is 200 meters wide and 500 meters tall. The project will be built in the northwestern province of Tabuk in Saudi Arabia. It will stretch 170 kilometers in land from the Red Sea through desert, mountain, and upper valley landscapes. The northwest of Saudi Arabia is mostly a dry desert now. If you ask Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman though, it won't be for long, because this area must become the world's center for technology. Neem is the name of the project. It should be done by the year 2030. To put it simply, a huge project. Cities, pricey places to play, and trade must all come together in a place where luxury is the most important thing. So what should you think about? There will be, among other things, a fully automated and very modern port city called Oxygen. It will be on the Red Sea. But there is also a man-made ski area and spa called Trigina. Here the richest people in the world can see light shows, do winter sports, go to film festivals, and do a lot more. Large-scale building projects. But the line, a mega city that can house 9 million people, is definitely the craziest of them all. Nothing new, but the line breaks every rule about how to live in a city. The shape of the Arab metropolis will be different from what we are used to, which is clear from the name. Neem's website says that the line has to rewrite the whole idea of a city. So where do you start? With the shape in this case. Because most cities are shaped like a waffle or a spider web, the line is just a line. On both sides, huge glass walls will be built around the whole metropolis. Not only are these 170 kilometers long, but they are also 500 meters tall. For your imagination, the Eiffel Tower is only 300 meters high and only 11 buildings on Earth are taller than what the line is supposed to be. The 9 million people who live in the ultra-modern city work and live inside the huge walls. And inside the walls is a kind of urban garden with fake forests, lakes, rivers and waterfalls so that people can be in nature in just a few minutes. In short, a city park that is very modern. You probably already knew that the people who design the city are very ambitious. But the plan is almost alien in more ways than just the huge walls and city garden. For example, in the line, there should be a floating football field. If artificial clouds are made so that more rain falls around the city, children should be taught by holographic teachers, and a huge artificial moon will make the night brighter. These are just some of the many strange plans. We haven't even talked about the high-speed line that will get you from one end of the 170 kilometers long city to the other in 20 minutes didn't see train. Then you just take a taxi that flies. Yes, those really are part of the crazy plans. Also important, all of this must have no effect on the climate. Yes, Saudi Arabia is no longer an oil state. The line can't put out a single gram of CO2 because, among other things, it uses public transportation instead of cars. Leaders of the project say that the lack of pollution, preventive health care, and artificial nature will make people here live longer than people in other parts of the world. Sounds too good to be true. The things Neum wants to do almost sound too good to be true. And maybe it is. Experts say that a budget of $500 billion is not possible. Just building two skyscrapers that are 500 meters tall and 170 kilometers long will cost billions. And that doesn't include all the weird gadgets, transportation systems, the port city of Oxygen, or the resort city of Trigina. But the shape of the line raises the necessary questions, no matter how progressive it may be. What do you do when the city is already full? Will there be a list of people on hold? Any way you look at it, it will be hard to grow compared to other cities. And what if people don't care enough about it? Once tall skyscrapers are there, it's also hard to go backwards. 
And will the lime be as good for the environment as it wants to be? For the millions of people who live there, you need thousands of elevators and escalators to get them to different floors. Experts also say that getting clean drinking water to the buildings will be hard, and that ventilating the buildings and making sure the lower floors get sunlight will cost a lot of energy. At first glance, the high-speed train also seems like a good idea. But what happens if someone finds the trail? In a normal city, you take a different path, but the line makes that much harder. And if everyone has to take a flying taxi, the sky will be full of people. Is it okay? A small part of Neam's website says, the line is a civilizational revolution that puts people first and offers a way to live in the city that has never been done before. So focus on people. But is that possible in a country where you can still go to jail for being gay? Where press freedom and freedom of speech are the worst in the world and where hundreds of people were killed in a mass execution in March 2022? Or will the line be totally different? In 2020, the Business and Human Rights Resource Center wrote several times about human rights violations in the area where the city is going to be built. About 20,000 natives have already been forced or scared out of their homes without getting anything in return. And in April 2020, it was said that Saudi forces killed an activist who was protesting the forced removal of his community. So, Metropolis, the line makes a lot of questions right now. There are a lot of questions about the quality of life and human rights, and it's not clear who will build it or how easy it will be to get to other big cities like Riyadh and Medina from the line. Because the people in charge of the project say that about 460,000 jobs will be made in the Neem area, but that's not even close to enough for the 9 million people who live in the mega city. And the website says nothing about how much it costs. How much does an apartment cost? And is there a range of costs? And is it only for people who live in Saudi Arabia? Or will soon everyone in the world be able to live inside the walls and ski in the desert? We'll have to wait. The line will mostly stay a good idea for a science fiction movie until then. According to Mr. Kadumi, the biggest challenge currently facing the line is the limits of its own success. The project team are currently conducting an enormous number of studies and research streams to develop and grow the project. He says the project finds itself immersed in blue sky thinking as they imagine how life can be different on the line. However, they have already started construction and are well into the execution phase. The greatest challenge then becomes how to run these two priorities in parallel. We are putting a huge effort into keeping the dialogue going between these two streams of work, he said. Each constantly complements the other, with the research motivating disruptive innovation in our thinking as we remain sharply focused on delivery. The first modules of the line are set to be completed in the coming years, with the first substantial population living on the line estimated to be about a million plus people by 2030. The eventual capacity of the line is 9 million people. It's a city that will continue to grow organically, Mr. Kadumi said. 9 million people is equivalent to the population of Greater London or New York City with its five boroughs. One can see that this is going to be an organic process that will take years. A solution to isolation and inequality. The project is being defined as an example of zero-gravity urbanism, whereby all residents have equitable immediate access to nature, social and commercial services within a five-minute walk, and most importantly, promoting inclusion through social connectivity by its very design. Mr. Kadumi said that by removing the need for cars and by designing a layered urban infrastructure, the line can further ease urban barriers that currently limit social inclusion. We hope that these vertical planning and design principles can be incorporated into the planning of other cities, he said. Building vertically benefits humanity, not only from a social viewpoint, but also from a profound economic and environmental perspective. We also hope to give people back their time, instead of being occupied with tedious daily tasks or lengthy commutes. We'd like to make more time for hobbies, for interests, for friends. Until then, we'll face challenges and difficulties like any other project but we have the ambition to make a radical and positive change in urban life. In an EOM, we are designing the line to take advantage of the latest advanced technologies and innovations, including artificial intelligence, AI, 3D printing, robotic automation, connected infrastructure and predictive technology to build the world's first cognitive city. The line will also lead in other sectors such as health, education, infrastructure, recreation and tourism. 
Lessons learned at an EOM can be shared with the rest of the world to benefit the future of urbanization and humanity as a whole, and not just the line alone. An EOM intends to join and lead some of the conversations around many of these areas and is keen to share its process and findings with other cities.